People have been building walls to keep out invading armies for centuries with varying degrees of success. Real life, the movies, and especially in StarCraft, a good wall can make the difference between surviving that Ling run by or not. All three races can use walls, but not all walls are created equal. And if you've watched any pro games, it may look like magic to know where to place the buildings. But really, there's a science to how they all fit together. So we're going to take a look at what it takes to build the perfect wall in StarCraft 2. Walling, or walling in, refers to the use of buildings in StarCraft in order to make a choke more narrow, and thus easier to defend or even completely blocking it off. Mainly used defensively, but can certainly be used offensively, its purpose is to always the same, to give you the advantage and your opponent a disadvantage in a fight. Before we can talk about building walls, there are some basic building blocks you've got to know. There are three classification of rules for buildings. Actually, scratch that. There are three classification rules for buildings, plus a couple of scenarios that do their own thing. We'll get to those later. For now, you just got to know that buildings come in 5x5, five 3x3, five, three three, and 2x2. Two two. All buildings fall in one of these classifications, and how you build them together will determine what kind of wall you make. Ground units also fall into three categories. Small, medium, and large. Okay, got that? Alright, let's talk types of walls. Keeping with our theme of three, you're either making a solid wall, a hard wall, or a soft wall. Solid wall means no units are getting through. A hard wall, or sometimes referred to as a semi-wall, only means small units are getting through. Think banelings, zealots, and SCVs. And a soft wall, where there are only small and medium units will make it to the other side. That's your immortals or your hellions. Sorry, Ultras, you're just too big. All right, let's build some walls. If you're new to building walls, one thing that will make this part easier is turning on the building grade settings in your options. Cause we're about to connect some blocks. Go to settings, gameplay, locate the display grid option and turn it on. Okay, so for solid walls where no units can get through, you can put together a two by two and or a three by three building one adjacent square away to form your wall. But with five by five buildings require two adjacent squares to be connected. For a hard wall, where only small units get through, you place buildings diagonal from each other. The exceptions are, huh, the exception are 5x5 five five buildings, because the way their grid works, if built diagonally from each other, you will form no wall at all. Now, if you're looking to make a soft wall, you need to place only buildings one square apart. You can change it from a soft wall to a hard wall by placing a small unit in between the two buildings and sit on a whole position to prevent it from running away. Once set, nothing is getting in unless that unit dies, or you move the unit out. It's important to note that units spawn in the direction of your rally point, so don't forget to rally inside your base unless you want your units on the outside of your wall. So remember when I said there were scenarios that do their own thing? Well, spore crawlers are one of them. Spore crawlers, though they are two by two, when placed next to each other, instead of a solid wall, they form a soft wall, letting all medium units except tanks go through. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. If you build them diagonally from each other, all ground units are getting through, except Thors. When it comes to building your wall and interacting with the map's terrain, there are some additional rules you'll want to keep in mind. Easily enough, unbuildable terrain, the squares near the bottom of the ramp that you can't build anything on top of, work just like buildings, so you should treat them like that. Now, if you're building beside mineral patches, they create a solid wall even if you place it diagonally. While Vespian geysers are also different in that if you build diagonally from it, it forms a soft wall and not a hard wall. Ah, hello stalkers. One last thing on terrain. When it comes to ramps, the requirements differ from the top of the ramp to the bottom top requiring more squares to close off than the bottom. It looks deceptive, but the corners don't actually need to be covered to form a solid wall. Pretty legit, right? While all races can build walls, each race uses walls differently and for different reasons. There are a lot of scenarios to build walls, we'll cover some of the most common for each race. Keep in mind, some of the requirements can change based on the maps. For Terrans, building walls are practically a rite of passage. They build walls more than any other race due to supply depots being able to lower as well as most of their buildings are able to lift off. A common Terran wall is made up of two supply depots and a barrack at the top of the ramp. But also when up against Zerg, you may see them use depots, command centers to wall in their natural. 
as you can see Maru doing that here against Dark. Protoss walling is also common with different combinations at the top, but it wouldn't be uncommon to see Gateway, Cybernetics Core, and a hold position Zealot holding the ramp. But on certain maps, Protoss will move this up to a choke in their natural, making it easier to defend. Also, certain Protoss players, such as Printf, are notorious for using their wall knowledge and creating devastating cannon rushes by using the terrain to their advantage. With Zerg, it's more rare to wall off because you want units to be able to move around quickly and freely, but when they do, it's often to stop early game rushes, Zergly run bys, or Hellion harassment, using different combinations of Evolution Chambers, Roach Warren, and a Queen to hold the line. Both Elazer and Armani end up using walls in their ZVZ to control their Naturals ramp. How you build your wall will be based off of the race you play, the build orders you're doing, and importantly, the map you're playing on but hopefully we gave you the calculations you need to keep your base safe and your opponents out. Good luck and have fun. ES Champ Builds is made possible by passionate viewers just like you. To help us level up the scene, go to eschamp.com join to become a member and get access to the community, previews, and exclusive shows.